Hello everybody, we're so pleased to welcome you to this discussion about the community engagement work that we've undertaken as part of the Ignition project. It's been a really successful collaboration, not just between these organisations that you'll hear from today, but with a wide range of community groups and youth organisations that have been actively involved in generating the learning that we'll share with you today. I'll shortly hand over to Rosie from the RHS. We'll talk about what we've learned about how best to communicate the benefits of nature-based solutions to climate resilient communities. And then we'll hear from Amy from Groundwork about her experience of working with communities to produce a range of nature-based solutions together. And then to Zane from City of Trees, and we'll hear some examples of what we've done to ensure that our practice has been as inclusive as it can be. I hope you find it interesting and we hope that some of you will be interested to have further conversations at a later date. Rosie. Thanks Michaela. So starting at the beginning of our journey, the system engagement baseline was established early in ignition between November 2019 and January 2020, with the aims of measuring Greater Manchester citizens baseline understanding of the role, functionality and benefits of nature based solutions and the vocabulary associated with nature based solutions and climate change. We also gathered citizens' thoughts on a greener Greater Manchester. And we collected this data through an online survey and a series of interactive face-to-face -face workshops. And our top learnings and insights gathered from the extensive consultations were that Greater Manchester citizens want more green spaces across their city region. Our citizens are aware of the risk climate change poses to their local communities and are motivated to take action on climate. We found that our citizens have a well-established understanding of the role plants and nature play in supporting human health and well-being and wildlife recovery. However, knowledge of plants and nature as a solution to creating climate resilience communities adapted to cope with the effects of urban heating and flooding is not commonplace. And finally, we found that the language associated with nature-based solutions and climate resilience can create a barrier to effective communication and engagement. From this baseline work, we knew that communicating the latest science and thinking with our audiences would be vital to building citizens' knowledge and cultivating informed local advocates for nature-based solutions. The Ignition Urban Nature-Based Solutions Evidence Base provided the source of research communicated through the Citizen Engagement Programme, which extended from spring 2020 through to the spring of this year. We wanted to understand how we could share this knowledge with everyone. So to follow on, I'm going to share what we did and what we found out. And firstly, lack of familiarity with sector language shouldn't be confused with a lack of understanding. When running workshops, we found that participants more often than not understood the concepts well and could explain them in their own main, meaningful way. Working with our community youth groups and schools to break down the science into tangible and relevant ideas and creating space and time for people to explain nature-based solutions in their own words has been vital to developing inclusive communications. And supplementing this science with visuals like photography and infographics can bring concepts to life for citizen audiences. Specifically, we found that local examples of high quality urban green infrastructure often evoked a sense of local pride. For example, the living walls at Deansgate Interchange in the centre of Manchester. However, examples of green space projects in affluent seeming residential neighbourhoods can accentuate feelings of inequality. Living walls often appear to capture people's imagination and almost act as an emblem of a futuristic green city. And green corridors along public transport routes and cycleways are popular ideas with young people, as this infrastructure supports their independence and health through active travel. We hosted various citizen engagement events, including a series of hackathons to mark COP26, events where, people, where different teams of people come together to solve problems. And briefs and challenges that frame real world environmental issues directed these events. And we found that this approach encouraged people to apply the latest science and research to develop solutions that could work specifically for their neighbourhoods. And it also encouraged them to reflect on their important role in, in con contributing towards positive change. We utilised world class projects like the Living Lab at the University of Salford to enable people to experience nature based solutions in action revealing less well-known plant benefits like urban cooling and flood mitigation and reinforcing understanding of the multiple benefits of urban nature. These flagship initiatives allow people to see the technology and engineering behind a rain garden, use thermal imaging cameras to visualise temperature differences between living walls and their brick, 
and feel the well-being qualities of the space by immersing themselves in greenery and interacting with vegetation. Local community scale projects like Eco Streets, on the other hand, provide best practice examples of ideas of what is possible to achieve in communities, schools at home and other local settings, and embed these interventions within the communities that need them so that they can directly benefit from these solutions. So I'm now going to pass on to Amy from Groundwork, who will share our experiences of working with communities to create nature based solutions together. Thank you, Rosie. So placing communities at the heart and valuing their input is vital for maximising environmental and social benefits. We need to meet people where they're at in terms of their experiences, places that matter to them, their knowledge and motivation to co-produce the most effective solutions. So while there was enthusiasm and understanding of the concepts of nature-based solutions, what was sometimes lacking was the how to bring these ideas to fruition. It became clear we'd need more tangible examples of nature-based solutions on a smaller scale. To bring this to life, we launched a competition, Eco Streets, which provided an exciting opportunity for groups to apply for funding to transform a neglected space in their local area with nature-based solutions. So we did take some steps to make the application process more inclusive and reach those who might not have experienced being a part of a project like this before. Things like opening up applications to groups that weren't necessarily constituted, keeping the application process short and prioritising applications focused on the ideas, the community support and the need rather than technical knowledge. Providing additional support in the form of webinars, infographics and videos to break down terminology and show examples across Greater Manchester, as well as offering support with construction, budgeting, community engagement and education around nature based solutions to build up people's skills and confidence where required. However, we definitely recognise there were still barriers to applying in terms of our relationship building, for example, groups who'd heard of groundwork would be more likely to apply. So what did we learn through Eco Streets about co-production? While our baseline established that the vast majority recognised climate change to be a major issue, this often wasn't the primary motivator for taking community action and health and well-being, social cohesion and simply efforts to make an area a more appealing place were all factors which played a large part in driving community action too. So co-production can be a really useful way of bringing together people inspired by different things. A typical example can be found with Gorse Hill Amazing Alley's Eco Streets group, which brought together those looking to tackle fly tipping, unleash some colour and creativity in their neighbourhood, provide fun interactive spaces, an educational resource for a local school, as well as utilising the power of plants to capture pollution and save water. So these multifunctional spaces that meet a variety of needs can really help to grow community support and ownership, as well as communicating these multiple benefits of nature-based solutions. To engage communities on climate change, we also found the local context to be really important. The most pressing issues facing communities are typically and understandably those on their own doorsteps. Therefore, engaging communities with nature-based solutions can often be brought to life most easily by looking at the hyperlocal and exploring local issues and smaller scale change to examine these big global issues. For many of the groups we worked with, the everyday experiences of busy roads, of fly tipping, lack of a community place to meet were all very real in people's lives. And the most impactful solutions need to practically address these local issues to connect to the policies and ambitions of the bigger picture. While the ideas and enthusiasm were there in abundance, there was often less clarity on the how of installing nature-based solutions at a local level. So from specialist skills and advice on what plants to choose, where items should go, the type of care they needed, construction, construction skills required, all the ways to physically create nature-based solutions needed to be explored. As organisations, we have a role to play in connecting communities with the skills and resources they need to enable them to deliver their solutions. And ongoing conversations and involvement in the community is really vital for building up these skills and confidence and helping people feel invested for the longer term. And through this project, we've been able to work with communities to trial how to style resources and work with them to create further guides to share their experiences with others. But engagement with partners is just as important. The application process for Eco Streets supported results from our baseline that there's high demand in Greater Manchester for more better quality green spaces, with 240 registering their interest and 45 form applications to Eco Streets. 
So there are many more worthy projects out there which could have been taken forward. And through working together with partners to share our skills, resources and learnings, we can really build on this at scale and create something incredibly impactful. So I'll now pass on to Zane to talk in a bit more detail about this. Thanks, Amy. Here at City of Trees, we produced outputs to engage with citizens through open discussion, listening and learning, and eventually identifying opportunities where we could improve access for citizens to green space within Greater Manchester. We have hosted guided tours within the city centre alongside the Living Lab, focusing on the importance of green infrastructure and nature-based solutions, engaged with schools on sustainable drainage systems and personal resilience towards climate change, we have also hosted a number of workshops and consultations with underrepresented groups, public webinars to discuss climate resilience or community ownership, alongside working with the Manchester BME Network on the creation of a green BME signing board made up of experienced professionals and representatives of BME communities within Manchester to collaborate with for the future. Participation has shown that there are pre-existing intergenerational links to nature, whereby the act of growing or gardening is a reoccurring interest or passion between generations, especially those generations that derive from migrant agricultural backgrounds. There is significant goodwill and enthusiasm for initiating sustainable actions whilst highlighting the importance of consultation and improving access to enable equity between different communities. We focused on local stakeholders and supported them in local areas, ensuring there was constant involvement to encourage ownership. This helped establish a working relationship and has given community representatives the power to expand or build on activities that communities are already involved in. Engaging with different audiences encouraged wider participation and provided development opportunities for different age demographics to become more involved within their community spaces, alongside increasing personal resilience towards climate change. Planning stakeholder workshops are incredibly easy with schools. You can link, link niche-based solutions or climate resilience with school curriculums. With communities, you can link into health and well-being, present socioeconomic issues and much more, alongside ascertaining the social value of such green spaces to promote further engagement work. It's having that conversation with stakeholders you know are underrepresented in the work you or your organisation focus on. Our consultations have outlined that listening and learning from the perspectives of local Greater Manchester citizens is a useful pathway in engaging communities as these individuals are more intrinsically linked to their local green spaces than external organisations such as ourselves. This form of collaboration provides a more tailored approach to engaging communities at a localised scale. Our pathway into creating this opportunity was identifying the right people that have the experience and infrastructure to work with BME communities in an authentic manner. We wanted to address this by paying consultants with both lived and professional experiences. This output was not only eye-opening with regards to access, but also because there have been numerous personal linkages to green infrastructure in Greater Manchester that have led to planning equitable solutions for Greater Manchester citizens that live in urbanised areas. Community representatives have outlined different yet unique barriers to access in nature, such as deprivation, unconscious bias, language or terminology and accessibility, alongside an intersectional focus into the links to nature. With regards to communicating effectively, connecting to target audiences via social tools such as WhatsApp, Facebook groups and unique hashtags may prove more effective and personal than current posts on different social platforms regarding physical or in-person volunteering events. Consultations or direct conversations with community champions or representatives from our experiences could be used as a form of engaging and communicating with target audiences. From our discussions through citizen engagement outputs, promoting objectives in person seems to be more of an effective pathway in engaging audiences and encourages more resilient relationships for the longer term. It also gives the opportunity to encompass the values and highlights the needs of your target community and linking these to the importance of nature-based solutions within Greater Manchester. I'll now pass on back to Michaela. Hello 
hope you found that a stimulating discussion of the importance of investing both time and resources in effective community engagement. We've heard that getting the communications messages and channels right, working alongside communities and co-producing solutions, and ensuring that we consider how we include everybody, a key ingredient in ensuring really good quality outcomes. But we also know that it's taken quite some time. It's about developing relationships with people and building trust, and we have to invest in that to get the outcomes that we need. If you'd like to discuss anything you've heard here, or if it sparked any ideas, please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you.